Hey guys, so in this video I'll be showing you how to replace this old rusty shower from this. To this. So for the installation, we need the DP switch. This is what is going to turn on the heater. It's housing, it's going to be stored inside here. The power cable and the trunking that is going to be used to run the wire. Yeah, let's do this. So first thing first, I need to check and ensure that the breaker that I'm planning on wiring the shower to handles at least 30 amps of current so as to prevent it from tripping. So this is the place where I'm going to source the power from. It's a socket from inside the room. I've already checked uh, its outlet from the meter box and uh, its fuse is a 30 amp fuse which makes it very suitable for using in this kind of uh, system. So I'm going to run the wire up there then into the toilet. So I start by mounting the trunking that is going to be used to run the power cable into. So I've already fitted the shower in, I forgot to record, now it's time to run the wires, the power wires to the shower head. So shower heads tend to draw a lot of current when it comes to heating up water and it is for that uh, main reason why you are required to use some very heavy gauge wire when doing this kind of installation. This is so that you can prevent uh, any potential failures that might occur when you use some small cables like speaker wires. So when you use a thin wire you tend to increase the resistance of electricity flowing inside uh, the wire it tends to become a very high resistance kind of a flow and for that reason you can easily lead to the wire catching fire or something this is because a lot of current is being drawn and the wire cannot support it when trying to reduce the exposure of the wire it is advisable to use uh, this flexible tube so that you can uh, properly seal off the wire Since this is uh, AC current, it doesn't really matter which side you connect the, uh, the live and which side you connect the neutral. But uh, the one specific wire that needs to be connected right is the earth wire. And if you look closely, you notice that it's the one that is colored yellow, whereas the rest are colored white. The earth wire is very very important, it really helps uh, <laughs> to prevent you from being electrocuted when you are showering. I came to notice some people tend to ignore that wire but uh, it's a very crucial component of this setup. It uh, plays a very huge role, a very very huge role. If you dare try leave it out, <laughs> the consequences will be on you. So as you can see, I've connected the live, the neutral and the earth. So what I'm about to do is what we call uh, insulation. I want to use an insulation tape to tie up the live together and the neutral together and the earth together. This is so that I can prevent any kind of short circuit. Something that I came to realize that most people normally do and have a tendency to do is that after they have insulated the live wire and the neutral wire and the earth wire, they tend to hold them together and tie them together using the insulation tape. When the current is passing through the wires, uh, it's not little current, it's a lot of current that is being drawn from that area. And since it tends to find that place as a weak point, they tend to become hot. And uh, under prolonged periods of time, they tend to burn out the insulation tape and sometimes even find themselves shorting. So it's not a good idea 
the moment you're done with the insulation part tend to try to teach yourself to split them together you tie the live alone and the neutral alone this is to prevent any heat build up that can lead to a potential short in the near future hapo kizungu imenipiga chenga but i hope mume understand kinge nimesema hizo vitu usijaribu kuzifungia pamoja ukizifungia pamoja zikihita na burn your tape and they end up short it's not a good idea as you can see i've put the live wire alone down then i've put the the neutral and the earth on top they have completely separated the two connections So I'm adding the flexible tubing for extra protection to prevent water from getting into contact. So the, the minor minor details do matter a lot. So I'm going to use the zip ties to hold the tubing in place. Being a DIY project, I chose to use some hot glue to hold the pipe together to the wall. I know people love different ways of doing their own things, but I chose this route because it, I was using what I had. And it actually worked perfectly because the wire, the tubing are not heavy. If you use heavy objects uh, with the hot glue, <laughs> they normally fall off. Once the wire was outside the, uh, the bathroom, I started running it uh, through the trunking. So here I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to place the switch, the master switch of the of the heater. So this will be the place where somebody will be able to switch on the heater or uh, switch off. When you switch on, you can use hot water, and when you switch it off, you can uh, use uh, cold water because people have different preferences. Another thing that I learned. Uh, and I would love to advise is that you should avoid the cheap switches as much as possible. Those things tend uh, to misbehave and uh, spoil very very fast. So here is where I get to mount the housing of the switch. First of all, I need to mark the holes. 
where the screws are going to pass through. So this will help me when it comes to drilling so that I do not uh, misalign anything. So after drilling the holes, I get to insert the wall plugs that are going to be used by the, as the anchors of the screws. I screw the, the housing in place. So here I get to estimate the length of wire that I require and I cut it to length. So this will get to serve as the output side of the wire. And this will be the input side, where I'll feed the power from the socket to the switch. So this is the switch that I'm planning to use. As you can see, it has uh, three inputs and three outputs as compared to the normal cap, uh, normal switches that normally only have one input and one output. This is so that when you switch off, you cut off, you cut the power completely. So here I'm using the wire stripper to expose the copper wire. So in this step, I get to connect the input side, which is the side that is bringing the power from the socket to that switch. And uh, the top side will be the output side, which will be taking the power from the switch to the instant shower. Uh, it's very good to be careful and to monitor which wire goes where to prevent uh, any problems from occurring. And one most important cable that you should not forget is the earth, uh, the earth wire. It's a very crucial wire. So this is how it looks after the, the connection has been made. You have to make sure that every single wire has been tightly screwed into that uh, socket to prevent uh, arcing and also any kind of short circuit. So it's time to screw the socket in place. And we'll actually notice that I keep on uh, checking to ensure that everything is still tight and no wires come loose. Yeah, it's a lose nothing. It's just a precaution that you can take to prevent any problems. So now we have reached at one of the most crucial, crucial po uh, points in this uh, DIY build. It's when I want to source the power from the socket. I know um, the professionals and would be so much against this. 
I know they would want the wire to be tapped straight from the box, but uh, this is a DIY project. It's not uh, commercial, it's not heavy duty. Uh, it's just something that I was sure that would work. And uh, they checked all the circuit breakers. I ensured that the amp ratings were okay. It was a 32 amp breaker and it was the, uh, supplying to only this socket. So I ensured that there was no overload anywhere. Uh, I checked the other thing, it was okay. So before I started messing with any wires, I went and switched off the breaker that powered uh, that socket. As a safety measure, even after switching off the breaker, I still went and used the tester and I checked through all the connections to see if uh, there might be any power coming to them. This is a, it's a good thing to do because you never know. Sometimes you might think that this, the breaker is off. Maybe you find yourself you've accidentally switched off the wrong breaker and you find yourself being electrocuted which is not a good experience at all so better safe than sorry always uh, go through all the connections one by one ensure that you never mess with live wire sure some of you have ever been electrocuted it's not something interesting many people have died out of it so yeah it's better safe than sorry some things are not uh, worth risking Steam I Juangu con a seventy two years of experience. Kiamok putandika in a kufanya mbaya. Yeah. So this is the point where I get to do my connections. I connect the live to the live, the neutral to the neutral, and the earth to the earth. And I ensure that uh, all connections are tight to prevent uh, any arcing from uh, occurring. Even after finishing, make sure you count a check. You know man is to error. Sometimes you might think you've done something right and yeah, it's wrong. So you lose nothing, you can count a check. Then uh, yeah, we close up the, the socket. So this is the point where I get to cover up all the naked wire. Uh, are you sure that uh, everything is tucked in properly as much as I possibly could? Of course you can tell this is not a professional job because I'm not a professional electrician but uh, I tried as much as I possibly could. This is how it finally looks. The power comes from the socket. It comes to the switch. Then from the switch it goes to the shower head. So the light comes on, this uh, tells us that we've done a proper connection, everything seems to be working well. So yeah, let's uh, test it out. So as you can see, the installation was successful. When the switch was put on, the water became hot. And uh, the previous one was a very rusty shower, and this is a new one. So this can be a very good DIY project for people who have the basics of uh, electricity. I wouldn't recommend it for a complete amateur, because uh, one mistake there, this thing can become very, very fatal. It can lead to death. All in all, thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking to the, the end of the video. Till next time.